Hello everybody, you know who this is and you know what I do. I am back with part six of my top 50 albums of 2018 and we are finally here. After five parts detailing my guidelines, 20 honorable mentions that just missed the cut, 50 through 41, 40 through 31, 30 through 21, and 20 through 11. We are finally here, the top 10. I'm super excited to unveil this, but I am not alone today. And the next four videos are going to be starring also a good friend of mine. Not going to say who just yet, you'll see in a minute, but they brought some really good expertise as well as a top 10 list of their own. Uh, they are an awesome person to bounce off ideas and I got some recommendations from them they got some recommendations from me so this is going to be awesome but this is also going to be very long the two videos that we created together were about an hour and a half so I'm not going to put you through one hour and a half video instead today Saturday and Sunday are going to be these five parts one tonight two on saturday two on sunday that way we can break it up a little bit and give you some breathing room unfortunately i want to space this out daily but not only have i been super busy on top of trying to edit these videos but also my internet crapped out once again so i had to wait to put up some of these Anyways, I hope you do enjoy this. I'm not going to be putting out an intro and an outro of every single video. I want to just keep the flow of this video going. So I'll just say this now. If you enjoy any of the previous videos or if you enjoy the five that are coming up, please do subscribe to this channel, like the videos, let me know what your favorite or least favorite albums of 2018 are. You know, share this with your friends and just keep on watching because there's some good material that's going to be coming out. Also, if you enjoy this person being on my channel, definitely ask for them to come back. We can definitely do some album reviews, some discography reviews, heck, maybe even some cover songs. Who knows? But enough dilly-dallying. I will see you at the end of this list a couple of videos from now with you know, a little bit of an update as well as just a little bit of a recap. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody. The Music Fan is back, bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. And I have a special guest today, my good friend Ryan, who's going to be joining me in talking about our top 10 albums of the year. Say hi. Yeah, hi. Nice to, uh, nice to be on here. <laughs> So she is someone who, like me, enjoys music, enjoys listening to a lot of new music, and is excited when particular releases are dropped. And we've talked about a lot of different albums over the last year. And yeah, when I was like, hey, who do I want to be on this year? I was like, hell yeah, I definitely want this person with me. Uh, so tell us a little bit about like what you like in music. Like what is what are your genres? What do you look for? I mean, I have a pretty expansive taste. <laughs> it's hard for me to kind of break it down into specific genres. I mean, last year when I was doing my like Spotify Unwrapped, it called my music taste escape room as a genre. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I tried to look it up. It doesn't make any sense. I'm a real big fan of like folky music, kind of weird, but more like folk as it expands on other genres. So some of my favorite artists are people who like make rock, who make like electronic music, but also have those kind of weird folky vibes to them. You mocked me for saying underground <laughs> music, but um, just kind of weird experimental types of things. But I do have a couple of taste breakers in the top 10, a couple, uh, couple, couple reaches out there. <laughs> the embodiment of hipster. Oh, cool. Thanks so much for that, Kyle. Thanks. <laughs> no, she she has a very eclectic taste. And yeah, we're going to be talking about our 10. Just some ground rules, of course. As you've seen in the other parts of this, this is, this is my opinion and this is Ryan's opinion. You, you know, if you want to blast us for that, sure. But these are what we <laughs> like. This is our type of music. And it's not going to be necessarily the mainstream music. So, you know, if you have your opinions, of course, be constructive with it. Or just let us know what your favorite 10 are. I've listened to probably like 
about 150 albums this year. I like, like, <laughs> well, well, how many would you say you? Um, probably, definitely less than that. I'm right. gonna say I'm gonna say probably around like 80 though. But, but like, that's I, still a lot. Yeah. So we've listened to a lot, and there's even stuff that I didn't get to listen to this year that I wanted to. Just not enough time. I got to do better with that. But this is what we love, and don't hate us for it. So we're gonna start off. We're gonna go one by one. So Ryan's going to go first with her number 10. So my number 10 for this year is Margot and the Nuclear So-and-So's. Don't quite know how the album is pronounced, but it's Verdugo, I think. Kind of a weird word. So Margot and the Nuclear So-and-So's really cool folk band that I always have categorized as my sad boy music. I've loved them for years. The reason it's my 10 is because it is kind of heartbreaking. So it's not as high up there as some of the like more hyped up, like, exciting, fun listening albums that I found this year, but Richard Edwards broke off from the rest of the band to make this album, and it's just got really cool, folky songs that are just, like, exciting, almost, almost country-ish at times, mm. but, like, electronic country. I don't know. It's such a unique album and just has some, like, really, really great tracks on it that I am in love with, so... You were right. You, We were talking a couple days ago, being like, <laughs> there are going to be a lot of stuff that you don't know. And already off the bat, yep, never heard of this band. Weird band. They're, I think their most popular song is probably, it's like Broad Ripple is Burning is what it's called. And it's the saddest song I think I've ever heard in my entire life. So uh, that's why that band has a special place in my heart. I see. Yeah. Are they like a somewhat new band? Not exactly. I think they probably started like mid 2000s. I want to say like around like 2006 or 7. Okay. But they haven't really been releasing new music because I guess the band did split. So it was exciting to see a new album put out by them and just like Richard Edwards' own vibe. He's always been the songwriter, so it's like cool he gets to like expand on what he likes to do instead of just like crazy work. All right. Well, we're going to go a completely different side of music for my number 10. This is Cody and Cambria, The Unheavenly Creatures. I've been a huge Cody and Cambria fan basically since mid-2000s. And their last album, The Color Before the Sun, was met. It was like a standalone album in their whole entire concept series that they do. It's really hard to talk about the concept because it's like spans over like 10 CDs and literally <laughs> a like a comic book series of if you know the history of this particular story, you probably know more than me. But I've loved their music. It's on like the heavier progressive rock side. And this particular album is a breath of fresh air compared to the last one. It's a very long CD. You're talking almost 90 minutes in length. Wow. <laughs> but it's, it's just jam-packed with so many great songs. And just hard-hitting throughout the whole entire album. You start with a seven-minute song, Unheavenly Creatures, which is fantastic, reminds you a lot of their work from previous albums. And it's 15 tracks, but every song is really good. I would say the only reason why it is number 10 is because it is so long. It can get draining <laughs> as an album, but the step in the right direction from their previous album. Nice. Yeah. I've never really listened to like a lot of Coheed and Cambria. I think I've listened to probably like a handful of their songs but I've heard like they do that whole like series thing where all of the albums kind of function as like a story yeah which is so crazy to me that's just like such an interesting almost like rock opera concept uh, that's always my jam I love concept albums I love a, a, a story throughout everything this one is in terms of everything that I listen to this is probably the hardest one to like grasp just because of there's just so much there but you can get lost in the music Claudio Sanchez has a fantastic voice you probably have seen him as the guy who has this crazy puffy hair um, <laughs> and just has this awesome guitar but he has an incredible voice almost kind of Scottish at times which is I like the way really you said cool Scottish Scott Scottish <laughs> Scottish Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> not, not Scottish. Say it with the accent and it makes it sound better. <laughs> yeah. So that's my number 10. Let's go to uh, number 9. Awesome. So my number 9 is Peter Bjorn and John Darker Days. Peter Bjorn and John just generally such an exciting, such a fantastic band. I actually got the chance to see them in concert this year, see some of these new songs live, and they're just really like engaging and exciting. Um, on first listen, I wasn't a huge fan of this album just because I'm so invested in their old stuff. They have this album Writer's Block that was like their most popular by far. It's got the song Young Folks, the like whistling song. <laughs> 
It's like super popular. Everyone oh. knows that song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so that's them. I um, n- never knew that. Yeah, and they're honestly just so fun to listen to. It's a really good album for, like, dissociative moods. So when you just don't feel like connecting with reality at all, Peter, Bjorn, and John, they're really good at making music that just gets you so out of your head, which, like, when you're going through hard shit, like, when you're, like, dealing with a lot, it's, it's just nice to, like, be able to sit back and listen to them. This album has a couple, like, really good songs on it. Not the whole album. I'm not a huge fan of the, like the entire album, but most of the tracks are super awesome. So that's why it wasn't ranked higher than it is, even though it's been like my happy go-to album this okay. year. Okay. Yeah. You were telling me about this band, and I, I did have it on my list to actually listen to, but never got to. Just so much music. Kyle and I do that to each other all the time, though, <laughs> to be fair. Like, <laughs> recommend bands, and then we're like, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give that a listen, oh. definitely, yeah. No time. No time. (laughs) It's actually funny that you're talking about a CD that you love a lot of the songs, but not everything on the whole. Because my number nine, this might surprise you because we were talking earlier about this, is Father John Misty's God's Favorite Customer. I actually had this much higher when I was first going through this, and I love a lot of the CD. The best way I can put this is, if you love Father John Misty, but you weren't a huge fan of the length and the grandiose idea of pure comedy... Because it was a very long CD and had a lot of really deep ideas. This one is very much bite-sized, very much refreshing. This is like 34 minutes in length. So 10 tracks, very easy to get into. But the concept is still very deep. So the idea of this CD, I don't know if you know it. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, Father John Misty just like, well, what what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say is that the, the backstory behind this album is he was having problems with connecting to his wife. And he went to a hotel to stay for an extended period of time. And he wrote this album while he was at this hotel. And it's his ideas are going on as he's dealing with mental anguish and isolation and a lot of different things. And that's what a lot of this album is about. It's really cool because there's other songs that are from the perspective of other people. So like Mr. Tillman, for example, is from the perspective of the bellhop that keeps talking to him every single day as he's drinking his life away at this hotel. Or there's, you know, the song Please Don't Die, which is beautiful and is one from the perspective of his wife being like, I care about you a lot. I can't see you being this way. Please don't die. You are the person that I have. And to me, my favorite song is God's Favorite Customer. It's just so, it's beautiful. And it's talking about him walking out at night at like five o'clock in the morning, just like surveying the, the sights and seeing all the other people who are kind of down on their luck and just seeing that and wishing to start again even though he's not like hugely religious, he's like praying to God being like, weren't I once one of your favorite customers? I love that. Uh, The only reason why it is a little bit lower though is for a 10 track CD, there are a couple songs that I don't really like. One being Date Night. I think it kind of doesn't fall in place (laughs) in comparison to everything else. It does kind of break trend with like the rest of the album. Yeah, it just, it's like a little bit over the top to be over the top. Um, (laughs) And then like Songwriter, I like, but not as much as everything else. And then the last track isn't fantastic comparatively to everything else. But when I think about a CD where like I picked up the lyrics quickly, I was able to sing along with it. I was able to, like, get through everything in a week. Father John Misty is good at that. Yeah. Like, good at that. Like, it, dragging you in, like, engaging you with the storyline. Like, he's always had, like, the lyricism is just fantastic. And, like, mm-hmm. in this album, yeah, with the the whole concept of having, like, different characters, like, perspectives in songs, it just makes it, like, I don't know, it makes it exciting. Like, exactly. it's fun to listen to. I would say if you've never given Father John Misty a chance, this is the perfect opportunity. And then if you like him try out Pure Comedy because it was one of my favorite CDs from last year and I can't believe he was able to almost top that with this album. (laughs) Bold statement. (laughs) Bold statement. Pure Comedy was so good. It was fantastic. Pure Comedy was so good. Yeah, Yeah, you're right. Almost top that with this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so bold. (laughs) 